Hi, I'm Alec Gerbeck with Yellow Dog Fly Fishing. Today we're going to be talking about packing for your trip to the Seychelles. We're going to talk about flies for the Seychelles, perhaps one of the most important components for a successful trip. Um, and we got quite a few different species over there that we're going to be targeting, but really we're going to focus on the big five that most people are going for. That's going to be bonefish, triggerfish, Indo-Pacific permit, milkfish, and giant trevally. Now, while these flies are constantly evolving, there are some general rules of thumb that we can really focus on for having great patterns over there. It's kind of a classic thing. You show up with the latest and greatest and the guides are already working on something different. Well, rest assured, these will work or these attributes will work. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So uh, first of all, we're gonna talk about bonefish in the Seychelles. Um, kind of in general, most of these atolls are gonna have pretty good populations and they're very happy fish. So we don't have to overthink these uh, flies too much in general. Now, with that being said, water is a bit more clear and there are situations where you're gonna be fishing for them quite shallow. So, my first focus is general color and then size. Um, colors are gonna be your kind of whites, tans, pinks. That's gonna be your main focus. And then as we uh, start talking about size, really a size four to eight is gonna be the bread and butter for your classic bonefish flies. Now there's situations where you might find yourself in the surf or on turtle grass where you can get away with some bigger, leggier stuff, but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and then lastly, just to touch on before I show some different patterns and attributes is um, you know quality of hook. And you'll hear me say this across the board. Uh, these guides over there are going to be wanting to bring those fish in as soon as possible. So they're going to be putting a lot of pressure with, uh, you know, a fluorocarbon leader on these fish so they can get them back while they're fresh. So high quality hooks on these flies, um, you know, Japanese steel, uh, some of the brands like uh, Tiemco, uh, Gamakatsu, things like that are going to be really important uh, when uh, either purchasing these flies or tying these flies yourself. So um, some of your classics, uh, most reliable bonefish flies over there are going to be flies like the Christmas Island Special. Um, this is, you know, top two or top three fly over there. Um, they come in a variety of colors, orange, white, pink, things like that. It really doesn't matter. I would say the most popular would be the orange and yeah, like a size six. Now, one of the things I really like about the Christmas Island and what's unique to them is typically they come with a like a brass or a tungsten eye. So this is going to be one of my flies I can really count on when I have a lot of current or deeper water. So I know when I cast my fly, it's going to be getting down to where I want it to be. Now, when looking into some of the other classics, like a, a Crazy Charlie, and again, you're going to see these flies, they're being used all over the world for bonefish. These are Bahamas flies, Christmas Island flies. Those are all great for the Seychelles, which is nice. A lot of transferable stuff here. Uh, but yeah, the Christmas Island, or uh, excuse me, the Crazy Charlie, this is going to be an example of a lightweight fly. It's going to have that nice bead chain. Again, kind of size four, six, or eight is going to be great. Just your classic winged uh, bonefish flies are gonna be great for a majority of the sand fishing done over there. Uh, last classic example, and again, falls right at the top of the list, is gonna be the gotcha. Um, these come in a variety of weights and sizes. You cannot go wrong with having the gotcha in your box. Um, I definitely have some with the kind of size medium or uh, small uh, bead chain eyes, and then step it up to a small lead eye or something like that. The next species we're going to cover is going to be the trigger fish. Um, now, the Seychelles are quite known for uh, trigger fishing in that they have a couple different species over there. And these fish are actually quite particular. Um, so it really having a variety of flies with the characteristics of lots of wiggle and durability are going to be the name of the game here. Um, you will see in a given day that a fly might work in the morning and not work in the afternoon. It's a, a frustrating fish, but it is well worth uh, the chase. So again, we're going to kind of talk general characteristics. I'm going to give you a couple of, of particular fly patterns I have been working in the past, but 
uh, these should serve as a kind of guideline with maybe some of the other flies you have or some of the flies you find in the fly bin. Um, so with a trigger fish, uh, they are a reef fish. They love to feed in kind of a residential area. They're always in that same zone um, throughout the tides. Um, and they are going to be feeding primarily on uh, crabs, shrimps, mollusks, all sorts of things like that. Uh, but as you know, a fly fisherman, we're going to kind of stick to the shrimp and crab world. Um, as we talk triggers and colors, well, there are a variety of different colors like oranges, pinks, and all these different wild things that can work at times. In general, we're going to kind of stay with the guideline of, again, tan, olive, brown, white. Uh, like here's an example of my fly box, for example. I just got back from a trip, so excuse some of the holes, but you can kind of see a blend of those different colors. Um, and this would be my uh, permanent and trigger fish box here. So... Yeah, let's first kind of start by talking about the shrimp. Um, the shrimp are going to be a little bit more intricate than your classic bonefish flies like we just talked about. Uh, we, we need some more wiggle. And this is a term that the guides and I came up with as we were designing these flies is uh, static movement. So imagine you've cast your fly and as it's sinking, it's going to have some sort of property like rabbit or rubber legs that's going to wiggle before you even strip the fly. Um, they're very aware, they're very spooky, so the more the fly can work for you, the better. Um, with the shrimp patterns, they can stay pretty muted, or they can be a spawning version where you have kind of some orange attribute to it. Uh, again, a very high quality hook is going to be important. They have very strong teeth and it is common that they'll bite through your hook. Um, and then the last attribute that's very important as well is going to be a weed guard. You are most often fishing these fish in some sort of turtle grass or coral and it is really frustrating when you've made the shot he didn't spook and you got to make that first strip and now you're stuck so tying weed guards on your flies or buying uh, flies with weed guards on them it, you can always cut them off if you're in a situation where you feel like they're going to hinder your success rate but yeah weed guards are important um, so this first fly, this is kind of one of the most classic or intricate shrimp, if you will. This is a, like a Peterson, Peterson spawning shrimp. It's got all those attributes I'm looking for. Um, it's got lots of wiggle, good profile, good color. Again, another thing that's going to come into play is weight. Um, you might find these fish in water this deep or their tails out of the water, or you could find them in, you know, three feet of water where you need to get down a bit. So having a little bit of variety as you're purchasing these shrimp or, or uh, crab patterns is going to be quite important. Next uh, shrimp pattern I'm going to talk to, and I almost want to generalize this more just because uh, Enrico Puglisi has a lot of really cool varieties of shrimp, whether it's a spawning shrimp, mantis shrimp, you name it. Um, again, if you look at this fly, it's got lots of little rubber legs, lots of wiggle, good size. This is a bead chain size. And what's really cool about this fly now too in this size is this is going to have some transfer over to bonefish. Um, I was talking about earlier where you might find some bonefish uh, kind of singled out in turtle grass or in the surf zone and stuff like that. It's harder to grab their attention with some of the more classic stuff like this. So often we'll be using, you know, these more intricate shrimp uh, to target those bonefish. Um, but yeah, another great uh, triggerfish fly is going to be the spawning or mantis shrimp by Puglisi. Um, coming into the other side of the world of the flies for triggers are going to be crabs. Now, there's a lot of different varieties over there. As a baseline, just like the shrimp, we want weed guards. We want uh, some different weights. We want a quality hook. We're going to stick to the same general guidelines of color being tan, white, olive, brown, um, and then you can have some funky stuff too. But perhaps the most popular that the guides prefer, as do I, is going to be the El Flexo crab. This is uh, really up the amount of uh, fish or, you know, success rate of catching trigger fish as well as permit and bonefish. This is going to be probably your most popular crab pattern when you uh, go over to the Seychelles. Um, again, they come in a variety of colors. It's just going to be a really realistic profile. And it's going to have all those attributes we've been talking about. Now they come in a couple different colors, sizes. 
And then you're going to see something kind of similar again, a good profile crab. This is the contraband crab coming in that tan color, weed guard, quality hook. What you'll notice when you fish for triggers is they are very aware and very curious. So having that profile as it's dropping through the column, you know, it's going to really look like a crab the whole way down and as you're stripping. Um, I find that helps keep them interested and um, want to eat your fly. So other examples are more impressionistic, not so uh, realistic. Are again, some of EP's flies, this thing's gonna have lots of wiggle, um, kind of some hot spots to get them attracted. Maybe you're casting a little bit further away because it's too shallow. Or again, yeah, like a, a belly flop. Again, kind of has some crab parts and bits, kind of lends itself to a couple different things, but has lots of wiggle. This is gonna be lighter, gonna land nice and soft. Um, with this particular species of fish, I will say try to at least triple up on your uh, different patterns that you are, are feeling confident in um, just because they are literally going to ruin those flies. So if you come with only one of that fly that ends up being the best, you're going to be sad because they're, they're probably going to chew it apart and then you have to find the next best fly. So real quick, we're gonna to touch on the Indo-Pacific permit. Um, and now, depending on the atoll, there's uh, you know gonna be higher or lower quantities of these things, but they are very fun to chase, and turns out they are just as hard to catch as well as they are over here. Um, in general, the guides, much like all over the world, they have confidence in a particular fly. Now, as a you know past guide over there, what I can tell you is that there is a lot of variation that continues to happen on these flies. But the pattern that they're going to be fishing is a flexo, uh, el flexo, excuse me. So uh, it's going to be kind of depending on the situation, water depth, is it on a stingray, is it in the turtle grass, all sorts of things like that. Um, but yeah, again, the El Flexo is going to be their main confidence fly. That's what they're going to tie on first. Um, and then I would say they will start pivoting off of that afterwards. So again, the El Flexo, typically in tans, whites, pinks, things like that, size 2 all the way down to a size 8. Um, you know, and then, yeah, there are situations where they've caught them with olives or browns and things like that. But yeah, just, uh, just a quickie. Um, they are evolving. Well, you can pick up some permit flies, you know, stateside or where you're coming from, uh, to take over there. I would say rely on the guides for their version because it is going to be a very particular, uh, fly for the situation. The other one I would just want to call out really quickly too is the milkfish. Um, a very unusual fish in that it is a plankton eater. It's going to be a grazing fish, not a predatory fish that's really chasing something. So uh, what they have found to be most successful is going to be a spirulina imitation. Spirulina is essentially like a seaweed that the plankton will uh, attach itself to and then gather in these current lines and then the milkfish will feed on. So. Well, there's no real good uh, solution commercially. I think there's a uh, fully mill might have the milky magic still. Uh, Umqua had the milkfish snack. Um, essentially, it's just going to be uh, the right color and the right density of material so that, that when you land that fly, it's going to have a really slow sink. And so you've made a long cast to a group of milkfish feeding on the surface. Ideally, your fly is sinking slowly. And as they're grazing, kind of sucking in, it's right at that perfect depth. So very simple fly, good strong hook. The SL12S by Gamakatsu is kind of the mainstay. That's what everyone has their uh, faith in at this point with milks. Um, and then one other thing that's interesting, and you can maybe see it on this particular fly, is there's a little tungsten bead here. Um, sometimes the milks are feeding in different uh, water depths, so having some variety of weight. Um, what I like to do as opposed to kind of tying it in like this is just bring a couple tungsten beads with you that you can always kind of tie on to your loop knot on your leader before you attach this. But yeah, that's, that's the milkfish fly. General, you know, two to four of these for a week of fishing. You typically don't go through too many of them. Um, but yeah, there you go. Okay, last but not least, we're going to talk about uh, flies for GTs, Trevallis, Bluefin Trevallis, you name it. There's quite a few species over there. There's going to be a lot of crossover to all these different uh, species of Trevallis, though. Um, 
So in general, this is going to be kind of a broad spectrum. Uh, there are some attributes that I'm going to point out. And then depending on the fishery, there might be some subtle tweaks like hook size or colors that are better than others. Uh, but, you know, in general, let's first talk about giant trevally flies. Um, the first and foremost is going to be the hook. Um, everything comes after that. You have to have a very strong, reliable hook that's not going to bend out. Uh, you're going to be putting uh, extreme amounts of pressure on this hook once you've hooked the fish. And you're fishing a leader anywhere from 80 to 130 pound test. So you can imagine how much pressure that's going to be putting on a hook and it will bend it out if it's not quality. After that, you know, it's going to be coming into a profile that's going to be matching some of the surrounding food. Now, GTs will eat everything from a bird to a turtle to a bonefish, you name it, they love it all. Uh, but typically, as a fly tire, we're going to stick to bait fish profiles anywhere from four to six, seven inches long, and then a variety of colors. So, Definitely having some light colors for the kind of more clean water, uh, light bottom scenarios. And we'll talk about flies like the bus ticket. Um, this is one of the classics by James Christmas, one of the, uh, you know, one of the most uh, influential tires for me while I was over there. He came up with some really crafty stuff. And this fly is actually imitating a, uh, a powder bream, it's calling. It's just like a little kind of brim that lives on the flats, and GTs love them. Again, um, it's going to have that nice quality hook, gamakatsu. Uh, in general, hook size, anywhere from 5 aught to 8 aught is going to be your sweet spot. And yeah, it's, it's going to have that nice hook gap, again, that length, a little bit of flash, nothing too gaudy. Um, so yeah, the bus ticket. In that same realm, uh, you're going to have some more naturals that are going to be a, a two-tone, whether it's going to be a tan and white, olive and white. There are a lot of different kind of bait fish species swimming around, and having some of those natural, more muted tones are going to be important as well. On the other end of the spectrum, and probably the most popular, are going to be your all black or black and purple style brush flies. Um, there's a variety of ones other, out there, whether you know it's Fulling Mills uh, Brushies or uh, Puglisi's GT Flies. Um, these are fantastic, again, tied on a very nice, strong Gamakatsu hook, good length. Um, you know, the EP Fly's got a little bit more flash, but it's good to have a few flashy profiles in your repertoire. You never know, you might find that day it was all about the flash. Um, when I am tying these flies, I typically try to keep the, fly, uh, the flash more on the outside like you might see here. So in the event that you had a fish charged but you didn't quite finish, it's an easy adjustment to tear out some of that flash. On the other end of the spectrum, we have seen an increase of wild colors being uh, popular. Uh, something like the Flaming Lamborghini, for example. Another James Christmas fly, um, yeah, bright reds, pinks, oranges. Uh, it, it definitely having a few kind of wild cards in your box is going to be quite important. So that's your general kind of subsurface bait fish profile, um, and then you kind of step into the surface uh, flies. Um, there's a variety of different poppers out there as far as commercially available. Uh, the Nyap, the not your average popper. Um, this is going to be uh, kind of one of the classics for GTs and the Seychelles. Great fly. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful. Just remember, you can find all this information in the pre-trip planner that we sent you. We'll see you on the water.